Welcome. I'm Harmony Slater, your host of the Finding Harmony podcast. Over the past 20 years, I've taught thousands of yoga teachers and students to explore the intersection between ancient wisdom and modern everyday life, using mind-body practices to heal, awaken, and manifest their dreams from the inside out. This podcast is a sanctuary for those feeling overwhelmed by life's challenges. Are you ready to jump in and discover how these challenges aren't actually in the way, but are the way to finding harmony? Let's invite the magic back in. Hello, welcome to the Finding Harmony podcast. Today we are diving into some wonderful topics, some very interesting topics around women's health as well as coaching and how coaching can lead to better choices and a more fulfilling life and a more fulfilling business and looking at the deeper dimensions, those deeper hidden things within ourselves that might actually be causing some pretty serious physical symptoms. So I'm chatting with Alyssa Van Elstein. She is a Mastery Method certified coach like myself. We attended the same uh, coach, coaching certification program. And she's a wonderful human being, a beautiful woman who has so much insight into how the mental and the emotional and the unconscious dimensions or layers of ourself can trickle down and start to cause some real physical problems. We share a similar story in being diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder. She was diagnosed with hyperthyroidism. I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism. And so we are looking at autoimmune um, issues relating to women, relating to some of those deeper underlying causes, and how working with a professional, with a coach or a therapist or a healer um, on some of these deeper issues, these deeper mental emotional aspects of ourself can actually heal our physical symptoms. And so we are talking about the ethereal as well as the material realms today. And I hope you really love it. I hope that it gives you some inspiration and insight. And if you are struggling with an autoimmune disorder or any other kind of physical pain or physical problems, I would just encourage you to reach out. Reach out to myself. Reach out to Alyssa. Reach out to someone you trust for support because we can't go it alone trying to tackle these challenges in our life by ourselves is often very lonely and very isolating and it feels helpless at times and working with someone who can really help you connect to some of the unconscious places within yourself some of these deeper levels of energetic healing that need to happen can sometimes be the most valuable investment you make in yourself and in your health and in your life. And of course, we don't want to say that you should just do this and forgo the medical system. Definitely not. So don't think that we're advocating for ignoring the medical system. Both of us did deep dives into functional medicine and working with professionals in the medical field, naturopaths, and all of the doctors we could talk to and work with. So there is real science happening, but there's also something else that is manifesting on the physical level, and it didn't start at the physical level. So that's what we're going to explore today in this episode, and I just hope that it really serves you and gives you some food for thought, things to think about maybe in your own life when it comes to your health, your wellness, your yoga practice, your physical being, your mental emotional being, your spiritual being just checking in with all those different aspects of yourself today. Hi, welcome to the Finding Harmony podcast. I'm so happy you're here today because we are meeting with a beautiful human who is a coach, a life coach, a business coach, a motivational speaker. She is a dear friend of mine, Alyssa Van Elstein. Hello, Alyssa, how are you? Oh, doing so good. I mean, the sun is shining internally, even if it's raining externally, like it's just, it's such 
I'm so honored to be here. Thank you, Herman. Yeah. Oh, it's such a pleasure to have you and to have a fellow Canadian. Yeah, something we just discovered. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we both thought that each other lived in America. <laughs> yes, and we've only, like, known kind of each other or of each other for a year and a half, so. Right? I know. Somehow it never came up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's so fun. I love it. It's so yeah. good. <laughs> but I think, I think you're our first guest from Manitoba on the podcast. Oh, yeah? yeah. Okay. I think so, I feel special, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> claim to fame. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's not, not so many people in Manitoba, you know. <laughs> I get, I know it feels big for me, but you know, I don't see much because we're all spread out. So yeah, so much. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I think I, I would love to talk to you today and dive in about your journey, like some of your life journey, your health journey, because mm -hmm. I feel like that's really interesting and relevant to our guests. I know a lot of women, it seems like there's just been an epidemic of autoimmune issues coming up. And I don't know if it's stage of life or post COVID trauma or what, what not, but it seems like a lot of the women that I'm talking to are really struggling, like with sort of health issues, body issues, and feeling a little stuck in what to do and where to turn to. Yeah, no, I love that. And and yes, to to women being its own class of, of health. And also up until not very recently, studies in the medical field not being done on women. So it is, it's new and, and I love how the medical field and more of the functional medicine and holistic medicine is going with research studies on women, especially in autoimmune, because there is research that shows 80% of women are going to contract or are going to have an autoimmune condition. Mm -hmm. So yes, for support that way. And I would love to share because that's been a really huge part of my journey. I think longer, but for sure in the last year, year and a half, mm -hmm. Um, before that, I had major health issues with my spine and spinal surgeries. And wow. I'm also my own case study in the world for this um, bilateral psoas abscess, so an infected spinal prosthesis. Wow. And that stayed in for six years because I, I just kept getting pushed off as, oh, you have fibromyalgia, you have chronic fatigue, you have chronic pain syndrome. So nothing really being done or, or you're pregnant or you're postpartum. Oh my God. So just really not, not, um, not even a desire to seek or to try to understand, which is really unfortunate, yeah. but also just the reality of the way the medical system is. And at that time too, I didn't, I didn't know any better to seek outside of that. Yeah. Wow. I heard this funny quote today that really resonates with what you're saying is that the medical system up until fairly recently just treated women as smaller, more emotional men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. right? <laughs> well, it's so funny because like women are so different. Yeah. Like you don't have to go any farther than just looking at a man and a woman yeah. or studying them for like two days. And you're like, yeah, there's some major differences there. I wonder what's underneath the skin that causes those differences, right? So, yeah, it's um, it blows my mind a little, but I'm also really thankful for my journey because, and I don't know if you want to go dip into the, the past a little, but yeah. bringing, kind of fast forwarding to when I was diagnosed last year with an autoimmune condition um, with Graves' disease, hyperthyroidism. Mm -hmm. And I only got my diagnosis in... October of last year, but throughout the whole year, I was, I was fainting. I was eating more than 4,000, 5,000 calories a day and losing weight consistently. Wow. And I was, I just had my baby in January last year. So I would go into the doctor and I'd say, there's something wrong. And he said, no, you're postpartum. Oh my God. And I'd go in again and he'd say, or I went in because I was sure I was pregnant because it really disrupts your hormones, right? I was like, right. I'm pregnant. I've done five pregnancy tests. That's all say negative. Something's going on. Yeah. 
And they say, well, it's probably a urinary infection. And I'm like, no, no, it's not. Like, can, can someone just please do a blood test? And, wow. and it was no, here's antibiotics. And I didn't, I took like maybe one or two. And then they're like, no, no, actually the test came back negative. Yeah. And then the, the next reason was, oh, well, this is your first healthy pregnancy or postpartum. So maybe it's that. And I'm like, no, no, I don't feel good. So finally, months later, when I got, when I was like literally passing out, when I walked, I couldn't make it up the stairs. And I'm like, well, this feels a lot like when I had this major infection in my body and when everything was disrupted again. And I'm like, I, I don't want it to be that again because that was excruciating. Yes. So finally going again. And this time I had um, tachycardia and um, my resting heart rate was over 100 beats a minute. So my doctor was like, okay, let's do some blood tests. And the next morning he called, he's like, okay, we're going to do another one, but it looks like you have hyperthyroidism. <laughs> and I was like, wow. thank goodness. Thank you. What's the next step? Yeah. So the funny thing about autoimmune conditions, it's like, well, here's medicine. That's your only option. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to be on this for the rest of your life and we're going to monitor you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't like that. I'm not up for that. So for the first time, and I was really waking up to, I know my body better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And really like throughout the course that we took and everything else, I trust myself, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to make the decisions for my body. Yeah. Like, yes, I'm going to like seek outside help, but really if I don't feel good about it, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. So I sought out um, a naturopathic doctor. So more along the functional medicine side of things and and we started supplementing my body with with um, gut help and mitochondrial help and and just supporting what had been so destroyed from a six month antibiotic series that I was on previously, yeah. um, being really sick with infection for about six years, yeah. plus a lifestyle that previously was full of stress and full of really denying myself and. And I was, I, I, I was an alcoholic for a while and I asked for help for that too. And everyone was like, no, we drink too. And I'm like, no, no, I'm actually worried about it. Like, help me. Wow, <laughs> and yes. it was just, well, no, we, we use it too. Or if that's what you need, like that was the support that I had around that. And, and it wasn't just like a glass of wine here and there. It was like, well, one or two bottles a day. Yeah. Wow. And I did that. That was my pain management. Cause I, I, didn't want to use medicine, right? So I was like, well, this this feels, this could be better. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, and everyone says it's okay. So it's like yeah. very interesting. So really working on supporting my body, getting back to a healthy state. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the, um, I did still use the medication that was recommended at a really low dose mm -hmm. um, to really help me get back to actually a functioning state. So where I wasn't passing out all the time or my heart didn't feel like it was leaping out of my chest. And yeah, that made things a bit easier. But the main thing was that my, my main source of medicine was actually lemon balm and rosemary. Wow. So I had tea daily. That was my, that was my medicine. Cause that was a, those are both nerve call or sorry, not nerve, um, thyroid calmers. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I did. That was my, my medicine. And I was stable. So this was October till January. In January, I got my symptoms like they were still there. Mm -hmm. It was still, it didn't feel good. Like I was still having some lightheaded episode. It felt like my body and my head were not connected. I was still having vision problems and then kind of body jumpiness and some heart stuff. And and I'm doing looking up stuff and I'm like, this seems really related to vagus nerve, mm. which with my past and also my major abdominal surgeries, yeah. okay, it could be damaged. It could be stressed. It could, it just could need a lot of love. Yeah. So I brought this to my endocrinologist and he said, no, just keep doing what you're doing. It's not related. And I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you know the body yeah. at all? Um, so uh, I fired him. Yeah. <laughs> I can't go back to you. 
like you're completely dismissing new evidence, right? Like if you look at it just from that point of view, really powerful evidence, right? Like I'm on medication that should make me stable and supplementing, but these symptoms are popping up. Mm. So I started treating my vagus nerve just at home, different breathing techniques, different stretching uh, with chiropractor, with osteo, Mm -hmm. um, just the icing techniques to help calm it, um, gurgling, humming. And that's when my TSH levels, my thyroid started functioning properly. It was still kind of touch and go. Mm -hmm. And I did, uh, I did monthly um, blood tests. So I was monitoring it on my own and, and it was amazing. And I'm like, okay, let's keep doing this. And I would kind of try on and off to go off my medication, but wasn't quite there yet because I wanted to make the switch totally to supplements, but I wasn't quite there. And I'm like, okay, what else? Cause I know it's within me. Mm-hmm. And this, I love this part. I had a really powerful coaching session, mm-hmm. like mind blowing. And it was circling around receiving mm-hmm. because I just, I couldn't receive. I couldn't even receive like peer coaching. I couldn't ask for help. I always had a sense that, no, I need to do everything and take care of everything just for my safety, right? So I had this really powerful session and this may not sound like much to people outside of community who understand this type of um, language or anything, but really connecting with the part of me. And it was a really young, young part that was trying to manage everything. And that was so scared all the time. Mm -hmm. And she just wanted to hide under a blanket, but she's the one that was trying to, to control everything and take care of everything. So really connecting with that part and allowing it to rest and just say, I got this. Like I'm an adult, right? Me at this stage of consciousness, I'm an adult. You can take a rest. You can be however you need to be. And doing work with that. And, and it was, I, I say work with that, mm-hmm. but it was about a 30, 40 minute session yeah. at that level, connecting with that part. And it's been a daily practice now to just check in and say, what do you need? Mm-hmm. How can I listen to you? Yeah. Because I didn't before. And since that day, I stopped my medication and my levels have been normal. Amazing. So really this this whole thing about like, mind, gut health, mind, body. And I find in my experience that there's so much involved in seeking inner safety because that's going to affect the way that your cortisol runs. That's going to affect how you process different things in your body. Mm -hmm. So for me, seeking that safety, which also opened doorways to, um, to me booking travel for the first time in like, so long and it was like it was like a, a switch flick or a, a switch flick a, flick. a switch, a flick. Flick. A switch? <laughs> oh my goodness yeah we're, we're going with that <laughs> it was like all of a sudden okay i don't need my phone on me at all times for emergencies mm-hmm. okay i can relax and sit back and enjoy the children let's book some trips let's go have fun yeah, wow. right and just this really deep inner knowing of i'm fine like i'm good now I'm allowing myself to rest, which is really helping my healing. Yeah. So, yeah. It's so like what you're saying resonates so much um, mm-hmm. because it's so funny. Another thing we have in common, I was also yeah. diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder last year. Yes. Yes. Um, the opposite, hypothyroidism. Okay. And, <laughs> but I think like the thyroid, um, you know, I think everything you're saying really resonates with, Mm -hmm. and it's so funny because, you know, I teach yoga, I teach mindfulness, I know all about vagus nerve regulation and, um, you know, heart centered breathing and heart coherence and all of the things, all of the tools. Yeah. But it's interesting. I think there's something, you know, whether it could be anything in, in life, but maybe even just like coming out of this, um, you know, somewhat traumatic kind of COVID period, not Mm -hmm. traumatic in a way of like intense trauma. I mean, in some ways it was quite enjoyable, Um, (laughs) but feeling not safe, like at a very unconscious, deep level of like, Mm -hmm. 
um, things aren't normal and it's yeah. not safe to relax. Yeah. Right. Because things were always changing. Like, like one day, yes, next day, no, mm-hmm. one day mass, next day, no, you know, and mm-hmm. did you get vaccinated? Did you not get vaccinated? Yeah. Like so much conflict, so much. And so it really yeah. felt, I think at a unconscious level, very unsafe. And I think it's really interesting that you bring up how sometimes these, these uh, experiences can really trigger old parts of ourselves. Yes. Right. Yeah. And go back to that time when we felt unsafe as, mm-hmm. you know, a child, a very young child, potentially. And yeah. the man- management strategies we used as a young child mm-hmm. to create yes. safety and control in our environments. Yeah. And how even just that energetic kind of mm-hmm. connection, you know, <laughs> I mean, the way a child controls their environment and the way an adult controls their environment is very different. It looks different, but the energy yeah. is the same. Yeah. And yeah. going back and needing to go in and heal that pattern mm-hmm. in order to heal the condition. Yeah. And I think I want to highlight that because that is just really key to what you're saying, right? We're not healing symptoms, right? Which is the way if you go into the medical field, it's like, oh, you feel tired. Okay, let's pop some caffeine pills or give you this to regulate that, right? Like, we're not doing that. Or you feel or you're tired or just go sit in front of a screen for a while, right? No, it doesn't help right, is really underlying. And I um, I found this really helpful um, diagram when I was starting to do my searching for all these things. And it's about um, hormones. And you have like your top tier, like your little, it's a triangle diagram. So your top tier is like your progesterone, your estrogen, your sex hormones, your thyroid hormones, then second, and then the base, which is what everything is based on cortisol and insulin and one more that's not coming right to mind. And the the big takeaway from that was when you have your top tiers out of regulation, you don't regulate those, you go lower. Because then we're looking at your stress, we're looking at your lifestyle factors, we're looking at your inner experience, yeah. right? Because you could say, well, this is how I've always lived, right? I don't have much stress in my life. And I remember I actually did that when I was at my first naturopathic doctor appointment, I was like, no, I'm pretty good, right? Like, I don't, I don't have much stress. And then actually slowing down and looking at it, I was like, oh, I'm constantly stressed. <laughs> Just by examining my thoughts, right? It's like, hurry to this, do this, make sure they're okay, checking on this. And it was really, it took a lot of slowing down to actually acknowledge just because you've been doing it this way doesn't mean that it's not there, right? Just because this is the norm doesn't mean that there's not stress or anxiety or other things. And I was living in a constant state of stress and anxiety. And that was really amazing just to catch myself in that, right? Because we've been working on consciousness and awareness and all of that for so long now. And to actually catch myself and be like, Oh, you were trying to pull that blanket over because it was just normal, yeah. right? Because your nervous system was used to being in that constant state of stress. Yeah, and we start to feel safe in that state, right? Even if it's an unhealthy pattern because it's normal or it's yes. consistent and usual, we think, oh, well, this is the way I feel safe in this pattern. It's like, yeah. You don't know anything different than sometimes relaxing, sometimes slowing down yeah. feels more dangerous. <laughs> yes, which is such a great point, right? Because we have um, in your practice as well, too, with our clients, it's yeah. we're doing something new, right? That That's healthy, right? That's spacious. That's really questioning the way that we used to do things. But it's scary and there's such like an unconscious fear to it because it's not normal. Yeah. And it, I think it's really interesting too that like this point that you're bringing up and I'm I'm just curious if some of the people listening, you know, they have a really regular consistent like 2-hour yoga practice that they do every morning. Mm-hmm. And yeah. what I found in in my own sort of going through all this was that actually 
that in a way, like the, all those practices that you, you know, are supposed to be regulating and de-stressing you actually were dysregulating and creating the stress. Yeah. And it's like the attachment to having to have this practice show up in your life in this very specific, particular kind yeah. of way and engaging with it from this place of a past self and trying mm -hmm. to like force it onto your current state actually yeah. was creating a lot of the, you know, mis mismatch of energy yes. and alignment and was actually creating dis-ease rather than healing and health and wholeness, which you would, you know, expect. And it was so frustrating because people were like, well, you should do some yoga. You should do some breathing. And yes. I'm like, I do that all day long. <laughs> like, you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I think that's a really important point because there's a, there's a why are you doing it, right? Yeah, exactly. And there's a, am I doing it out of fear? Am I doing it out of inspiration? And one really beautiful way to slow down is if I stopped, what would I fear would happen? Yeah. Yeah. And if it's like, well, I'd miss it. That's not a fear. But if it's like, well, then I'm going to lose my concentration or I won't be able to function during the day or I'm going to tumble into these other habits. That's out of fear. So that's something deeper that needs to be worked with. Yeah. 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 yeah so exactly. that's a really powerful point to bring up. Yeah. Yeah. I love that because I think looking at that fear of what do you mm -hmm. fear will happen if you don't do the thing or if you don't, yeah. you know, and it's the same with any addiction. What do you fear will happen if you don't drink the glass of wine at night? Yeah. Right. Or one that I have, um, I work more life and business right now. So with my clients, it's more of a, okay, if I slow down from work, if I'm not working all the time, right? If I step away, what would I fear would happen? And usually it's tied to, well, what we know, like a sense of worth, right? Yeah. Then I'm not providing enough, or then I'm not doing enough, or then I'm not valuable as a person yeah. if I'm not working, right? Because we have um, in North America, I don't, yeah. I haven't traveled much to other countries, but in North America, especially, there's this really strong attachment to your self-worth with your career, right? When you go meet someone new or talk to someone, it's how's work going or what do you do as that's who you are as a person versus now when, when I get asked that question, it's like, well, I sit around with my kids, we, we hang out. Um, and it's like, well, I still have a successful business, but it's like, that's not who I am and that's not what I do, right? Like my life is about my family and my health and I, I love gardening. And you know, in, in Canada, we don't have very long of a season to garden. So <laughs> I'm also like a gardener at heart and like really finding ways to create a healthy environment. And I do lots of regenerative styles. So really let's take care of the earth and our bodies and let's work together, right? So that's who, that's the basis of me. And well, it's still not even the basis of me, right? Because it's so much deeper. And I have to say, I want to, I want to lead into something else with that point. Cause, um, at the beginning of my health journey, I, um, well, I'll do one step sooner coming out of high school, throughout high school. I'm a, I'm a three on the Enneagram. So I'm an achiever, right? So yes, <laughs> sisterhood in that. <laughs> yeah. And it was, I wanted to go in the medical field. I wanted the Olympics for volleyball. That was my sport. And I just wanted to do and give and achieve and just I wanted the cover of a magazine I remember that's my goal once I have the cover of a magazine then I'll be important right like really really interesting thoughts reflecting back on them and and then I had a spinal injury and I was also top academically and all these other things and and I went from at the time being in university and I worked at a restaurant and volleyball refereeing um, to supplement uh, my income then. And I went from, this was a really profound memory, not having to write down anything for orders taken, no matter how many tables or how big the, the order was, to if I didn't write down a glass of water, when they said it, it was gone. Mm -hmm. Like losing cognitive function, focus, I had to stop every single physical thing that I was doing. The only thing that I was doing was working wow. and then sitting 
or resting for the most part. And I fought that hard, Mm -hmm. but it was to the point too, where it was, I even like, if I could have done something all day, every day after I got that injury, I would have liked to hide in a closet because I didn't even want to be around people because I had such a loss of identity, right? Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't achieve, I couldn't work out, I couldn't be involved in sports, I could barely work. Mm -hmm. I I couldn't even talk to people because I didn't have a memory to actually think of what we were talking about. Plus my body hurts so bad. And I remember sitting at um, the bus stop um, shortly after it happened and missing my bus because I didn't know why I was at the bus stop to go to school or university. And it was like, oh, like, what do I do? And at the time, I think I was, I don't even know how old I was. I was 22, 23 when that happened. And being at that age and otherwise looking very physically healthy and no kind of physical injuries, I, I was just always told, you're young and healthy, you'll get better. Mm-hmm. And I was told that for 10 years. And I got consistently worse and then brushed off. And then, well, you have chronic this or chronic that or fibromyalgia, which to acknowledge if you have fibromyalgia, if you have that on your chart, it's really hard to be taken seriously by any doctor for anything, just the way that the system is right now. And it's used as such a... Um, a blanket diagnosis. Mm. Yeah. I don't think there is such a thing as fibromyalgia. Yeah. Like there, there isn't. There's <laughs> underlying things, right? There's always a cause. Yeah. There's never no cause for pain, right? Yeah. Your body is a healing machine and it heals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if it's not something preventing it, right? Yeah. And it's trying to, I mean, in yeah. my coaching, I've been integrating a lot of spinal energetics. So I love that you're talking about the spine. <laughs> I, I, I want to pick your brain about that. <laughs> yeah, but it's so, I mean, it's so vital because as you say, like a physical injury or, I mean, it doesn't even have to be an injury. It can just be the pattern of holding tension in the body. It's all connected to our spine. Our spine is connected to our brain, but then it's and, you know, and it's electrical signals running up and down and then disruption or areas where we're holding pattern or like a slightly twisted vertebra or whatever it is can really change how we're feeling in ourselves, how we're perceiving ourselves, how we're perceiving the world. But then on top of that, we have these other layers of ourself, which, you know, I know both you and I coach on, right, which is like our emotional body and how that's being affected by, you know, our experience, our past, our history, our mental body. You know, mm-hmm. how are we in our heads? How are we processing things? Mm-hmm. Our collective community body, like who's in our, our group, how we're showing up, our identity within the, sort of our communal space. Mm-hmm. And then also that like personal soul connection of like, who mm-hmm. am I? Yeah. You know, what am I here for? Am I living my, my dharma or my purpose in life? Mm-hmm. And what is that? And do I feel like it, I'm connected to it? And so all of these things show up in our spine, show up in our physical body. Mm -hmm. And they might have these causes in these other layers, as we talked about, right? This small child who felt emotionally unsafe trying to control her environment shows up in your emotional experience of the present moment. And it's Mm -hmm. the same with all these other aspects of ourself too. And I think it's so important what you're bringing up here that we have to actually heal at all these different layers and levels of ourself and different ages and stages in our life. Yes. You know, all this unconscious stuff has to come up into our awareness for us to see it so that we can heal it. You know, we have to see it to heal it. We have to feel it to heal it. We mm-hmm. have to become conscious of it so that we can at least start to work with it. Because if it's just stuck in our unconscious, we don't know what we don't know. And, but it still yeah. affects us. It still influences how we are in the world, how we're mm-hmm. interpreting other people or experiences or ourselves. And so it's so yeah. important. And, it, and all of this healing can happen sometimes unconsciously too, right? Like yeah. Yeah. It's, if you're tapping into the right sort of aspects of yourself, it just starts mm-hmm. to kind of fix itself, right? Like when you realize, oh, I'm letting a four-year-old run my life right now. Mm-hmm 
and I can just be with her and love up on this part of myself that feels unsafe or feels like she needs to control everything. You don't actually have to do anything. You just have to become aware of that part of yourself. And in seeing it, everything starts to change and shift. It's really like magical. No way. It is. <laughs> and, and like you're saying, too, like it doesn't have to require too much effort, right? Yeah. But it is part of the conscious community as well. Yeah. So whereas... Whereas um, the normal tendencies, right? If you're not involved in, in these types of communities or this type of support, then the go-tos are entertainment or avoidance, right? Yeah. And I love what, um, what we were taught and just the basis of our program and how it's harder not to feel a feeling than it is to actually feel a feeling because that takes 90 seconds for it to pass through, right? And if everybody knew that, I mean, and had proper guidance and, but we were brought up with such a fear, at least in my experience and and from what I hear of for, for lots of people, it's to really fear our feelings or to really judge them. And then we're stuck with it, right? In these beautiful, beautiful, I say shame loops because there is a purpose for them, right? But there's also a way out of them. And that can be so easy. And I have a, a client that just had this beautiful experience where four months in, and I'm finding more in my practice that the gold really happens four months and beyond. Yeah. So I've I've decided I'm not taking any shorter containers anymore. <laughs> yeah. six months or, or more, which just from a service point, it's I really want to serve the people that I'm working with and and having that, like I don't want to end it right before we hit the gold, right? Like it's amazing. And with our session, she was in this, she's been in, she's done lots of work and beautiful place of consciousness, but getting back into her community mm -hmm. after traveling in India for a while, cause she does yoga and she's really involved in that too. And it was a different experience. So it was a 20 minute transformation, mm -hmm. really tending to that part. Mm -hmm. And then she was like, my life, is changed in seeing just the way that she was relating to people, her mother, especially, mm -hmm. and how big of an impact that has. She's like, Oh, I don't need her to be different. I don't need her to provide this safety and security and nourishment that I've been looking for my whole life. Mm -hmm. Cause I was expecting her to give it to me. I got this. And then everything changes. And it's really, it sounds so almost woo woo, but it's like, no, like it changes everything. Once you change the relationship with yourself and actually insourcing that safety, that nourishment, so you don't have to depend on everything outside of you yeah. to give you what you need, right? Because that is so just temperamental and such a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. So so it's really it was it was amazing to witness because for her, it was like just a light bulb. It was, it was so easy. And I'm like, oh, yeah. this is why I do what I do, right? Like just to see these parts. Yeah. And just hearing the statement like, yeah, I got me. I'm good now, yeah. right? I can let them be however they want to be. I can speak up if I need to, but I'm good. Yeah. Like it's just, it's mind blowing. Yeah, that it's such a subtle shift. It's such a small shift, um, yeah. but it, you're right. It makes such a profound difference when you stop looking outside of yourself and expecting things outside of you to change Yeah. and start looking inside of yourself and recognizing, I think also that the thing outside of yourself is just reflecting mm -hmm. an insecurity or something that you don't like about your own self. Yeah. You know, I have this, I had this experience the other day where I was thinking about someone or I saw someone that I know in a old person, old, old person, old friend <laughs> on uh, Instagram and, yeah. and whatever they were doing or whatever the, the, what they were saying or the way they were speaking. Um, it was like a little bit of a, the relationship didn't end well, yeah. in the, like in the past, like many years ago, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. almost 20 years ago. And so, you know, the healings happened in that I don't hold like any resentment or anything, but it's so interesting, right? People can trigger sort of things in you mm -hmm. and the way that just the way he's talking on Instagram, I was like, Oh, he's so like egotic, like, and it just like triggered this old like reaction in me, you know, of just like seeing like all this ego and all this like mm -hmm. 
stuff. And then I was like, and then I paused and I was like, okay. Yeah. But like, where's that in you? Because if you're mm-hmm. seeing it in him, yeah. like that's your own ego coming up and like saying like, well, I'm better than you because I'm not mm-hmm. so egotic, right? Which is the ego. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that so fun? I mean, now it's fun, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so then and as soon as I did that, as soon as I saw it and was able to be like, oh, well, that's, that's me. I'm just seeing myself there and judging myself. Yeah. It was like all of the um, power or all of the like potency of it totally mm-hmm. dissolved. Mm-hmm. And then I was just like laughing and I was like, oh man, like we're just all full of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it, it, like you said, it became fun. It was like, oh, well, that's just me and my, my own little ego trip that I'm on. And, and then it yeah. was fine. Then I wasn't at all triggered and it was totally... Mm-hmm. But it's so fascinating how the freedom is actually in recognizing that it's actually all your own stuff, you know, like it's yeah. when you have that, that, um, yeah, I, like that sore spot, you know, or that, yeah. that sort of charge around something. Yeah. It's really something that you're charged about mm-hmm. against yourself. Like the judgment is always you judging your own self. Yeah. Yeah, and I love that we're we're getting into this. I I do the work pretty daily, yeah. Byron Katie. Um, it's part of um, one of my practices. Whenever I notice something coming up, especially in my relationship, right? Like relationships are so beautiful yeah. for bringing up that charge. Yeah. And I want to share one of mine because I think it's really beautiful. But I was stuck with it for quite a while, and my my judgment, and this was while I was sick and then afterwards as well, was that my husband wasn't doing enough. <laughs> I he think a lot of women can that. relate to this judgment. I <laughs> should do more. He's not doing enough. Yeah. And then really turning that around and, and coming back on me was how hard I judged myself, right? For a while I was sick, well, while I wasn't capable of doing enough. But then also once I took the charge off, that was a really big part in my healing journey because this was – after major surgeries when I was getting better. And then instead of waiting for him to do something or trying to tell him or ask him, it was, oh, I'm capable, right? Like, oh, I can develop this part of me now that's been so kind of underwhelmed because I haven't physically been able to do anything. So really seeing the gifts that come along and it's usually it's a part two that just really wants to call attention, right? Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't do it in the most effective way. Sometimes it's really like in other people's faces. But once we put that mirror there and it's like, oh no, what does it have to tell me? Yeah. Right? Like I'm curious too with um, with your friend when that egoic kind of role came up, what was it? Was it, oh, I need to put myself out there more. Or I need to speak up or take up more space. That's a big one with, with women especially. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think in that instance, it was just more of like seeing, seeing the trigger and, and recognizing that I actually don't need to like be affected by that anymore, that this person didn't have any power over me actually. And yeah. I had my own power and my own yeah. sort of, yeah, space in the world and place in the world and that he could be however he wanted to be and it didn't have to mean anything about me, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think that's really powerful too because once you it's a really big shift when you get to that point where it's like they can be however they want to be it doesn't mean anything about me yeah yeah Yeah. and I think that's just shifting it because I I do a lot of um, work with parents as well shifting that to the parent-child relationship Mm. and they're the way that I grew up and in my community and it was the child's behavior reflected how the parents were yeah when i just i just want to take a like a knife like an axe to that kind of connection right there because that's so much pressure on just a child who's learning how to develop learning how to trust and find themselves and who they are without all the added pressure of you you show or you reflect your parents yeah totally 
Totally. And I think that's something, just one change could be made in, in parenting relationships or just examined or looked at a little bit more. That would elevate so much. Mm. Just, oh, my child can be their own person. It doesn't show up on me at all, right? They're learning how to express and about emotions and they actually can do it better than adults, right? Have you noticed that? It's so beautiful. If a child is needing to express sadness or anger, it's literally like a minute and a half. And then they just go on their way as if nothing happened. Like it's really confusing to see if you're not aware of the kind of the, the science behind it. It's like, are they crazy? <laughs> right? Like, how did they do that? Like they were angry. They're supposed to be angry for a long time now. Right? Like the stories we have, but that's because of all this repressed repression that we were taught. Yeah. Right? Don't be sad. Don't be angry. Yeah, it's true. Even like my son's a teenager now. And mm -hmm. so he has like all kinds of mood swings going on. Yes. Well, that in itself is just an amazing period. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And it's so interesting because also sometimes, you know, he's like agitated or irritated and yeah. he'll, he'll just respond in this way that's like, Rah, you know like yeah. I know or you know like in a mm -hmm. kind of angry way and if you don't take it personally if you just sort of are like all right you know you can you don't have to like call attention to it even so much like sometimes yeah. I do sometimes I'm like you know you can say that a little nicer like you yeah. don't have to I'm just yeah. checking in I'm just talking you know but mm -hmm. you don't have to like be like you know you don't have to like build on it which yeah. often happens right when someone like sort of um, speaks harshly, then you speak harshly back, right? It's like yeah. this, again, like this little mirror effect starts happening. Yeah, yeah. Rather or than just like accepting it and being like, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, or even just, oh, I hear there, I hear that you have anger in your voice. Yeah, or like, like that sucks. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, like, did something go wrong today? How, you know, how are you feeling? What's going on? Yeah, yeah, I um. I might, um, there was this beautiful piece that I read on um, teenagers and that experiential time where everything in their bodies is going crazy, right? Like hormones galore. Like if we think about pregnancy, yeah. like condense that into like a teenage experience, right? If we just think of it that way, with just like hormone fluctuations and everything, it's like, yeah, it makes sense, right? And at the end of the day, like the only thing that we can do is just like I'm here for you yeah. I see it's it's confusing right now yeah. right totally. I'm here for you and that's not going to change yeah 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 it's true it's so interesting I always feel like when you're a mom of young kids and your kids are pretty young right they're like yeah one three and five yeah <laughs> and five year old I'm like is, is this the teenage experience with my five year old I'm like Ooh, he has a voice and oh my goodness, he is just set on it and he will disagree. And I have to remind myself because this is a new way of parenting for me and for my generational line. And I'm like, okay, that's good, right? If he can disagree with me, that means it's safe to have his own opinion. I have to just calm myself because I wasn't allowed to do that, right? Like, no, don't disagree with me. You're doing it my way. Uh, so it's like, okay, no, no, it's okay. Deep breaths, right? So just, yeah, acknowledging that part too, right? It's not easy, right? It's not necessarily a normal way of raising your children, right? Normal or the way that most people do it, right? So yeah, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> I know, conscious parenting. It's like, I think every stage, every time you kind of like get the get the trick of the stage and you're like, okay, I got it. And then they go to the next stage and you're like, oh yeah. no, I got to figure it out again. Yeah. And I love, there was this beautiful reflection. I forget where, I think I read it multiple places, but your kids will trigger you when they reach the age when you weren't allowed to be authentic or express. So at the age that you were kind of stopped at in terms of, or when you weren't respected, something along those lines. And I'm like, that's so powerful. Yeah. And that just does such a beautiful job to just turn the mirror on you, right? Because mm -hmm. kids, if you think about it, they're just acting the way they should be. Yeah. Right? Exactly. There's such this innate sense of 
just following their hormones and their like they have such this attachment to their body and the way that they are. It's absolutely amazing. And I have no idea where I was going with that, but yeah, as long as we're just like, yes, they're doing exactly what they're supposed to and just put the mirror up. Yeah. Why am I caught up in this? Right. What's it telling it about? What's it telling me about me? Yeah. And what didn't I receive at this stage of development when I was young? Wow. That's like so powerful to, I think to do your own work first, I think you can only parent from that place when you're like, am I getting triggered because I'm feeling disrespected Mm -hmm. and like doing your own work around that? Like, you know, like, do I need to feel disrespected? Is it true? I'm being disrespected. Right. It's so powerful. (laughs) And then like, and then when you're not triggered, you can then look and say like, is there a lesson that, my child, you know, my son, my daughter can learn from this Mm -hmm. in a way that will be helpful for them. Right. Yeah. We often kind of try and do something like that. You know, if he's being or acting in a way that's, you know, maybe disrespectful or, you know, aggressive for no reason, (laughs) all the testosterone, you know, we then (laughs) would like kind of say, you know, Hey, it's fine for you to be this way here, but when you're at school, you know, or you're with other people, you want to check in before you respond with that mm-hmm. kind of tone because other people might take offense. Yeah. And then it's received, actually. He really receives it when it's yeah. talked about that way as like, hey, listen, it's cool. You know, you just got home from school. You can be however you need to be, but just make sure if you're not with, you know, us <laughs> you're checking in with your tone because it's kind of yeah. rude <laughs> yeah or even just like an alternative or yeah. just repair right yeah. how do I repair and I'm I'm learning that too as we're like we're going through new stages and it's like yeah I'm gonna lose it once in a while I'm human right yeah, for sure. we all are like we're all doing the best we can especially with parenting and I remember too the first like my first child being sent home from the hospital it's like you're letting me go home with this little person. I don't know what to do, right? And I think that's the story of parenting, totally. right? As we, especially with firstborns. And I think there's something so powerful about and unique and special about firstborns. Mm. It's like everything is new as, yeah. as they grow. And it's like their younger sibling, siblings at least get like more of a healed version of us, depending. But they get everything really raw and real and so just acknowledging that part that yeah, we're it's all so new and we're all learning. And I think the biggest thing is about repair. Yeah, for sure. And it's and that's part of the learning process, right? Like, yeah, I yelled, I raised my voice, I had anger and I'm sorry. Yeah. That I, I'm not sorry for my anger, but I'm sorry that I behaved that way. Yeah. Next my mummy's gonna check in, I'm gonna take some deep breaths. And then we can go from there. Like yeah. we start over, right? Yeah, totally. There's something yeah. so beautiful about that. I mean, I've lost my shit on my son so many times. Yeah. yeah it <laughs> but then it is the the real transformation. I think also the bond and the um, yeah. the uh, safety in the relationship too. The security in the relationship comes when you're like, hey, listen, I just want to mm-hmm. apologize to you. I really lost it and it wasn't your fault. And I was having, you know, whatever you need to say, like I was having a lot of stress from earlier in the day and this just really, you know, pissed me off. (laughs) I felt a lot of anger around this issue. Yeah. And, and I said, but I didn't mean, you know, it wasn't fair for me to project that onto you in this way or however you need to repair the relationship, because I think Mm -hmm. then it also allows you know, the child to know that it's okay. Like it's okay to mess up and it's okay yeah. to get mad and it's okay to cry and it's okay to, you know, have all these mm-hmm. emotions and mm-hmm. you can, you can still repair and trust people that it's yeah. not going to ruin the relationship. Right. Yeah. I think that's, that ties so much into being genuine and being authentic and not leading into those codependent and kind of enmeshed relationships where, especially when I grew up too, it was, I was responsible for my parents' emotional state, for their behavior, for their image, like all these things, right? As a little child, just trying to like 
pee in the toilet, right? <laughs> That's what I was focused on or playing or all these things. And, and instead I was responsible for like huge things, right? Mm-hmm. And not only like so big, but for people who, where I was earning love, mm-hmm. right? Earning love and earning safety. And so I think it's really powerful to let them know like you can be however you want to be. Like you're going to have anger, you're going to have sadness, and I am too. Yeah. And we can come together and we can discuss ways that we want to be together or how we're going to work through it or like all these different ways that we can do it. But it's okay, yeah. right, to have those things. And yeah, I love how we're going from topic to topic. This is really fun. Yeah. Uh, I, just wanna, I just want to acknowledge that because like when you think about it too, it's all tied together. Yeah, it's all interconnected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like when we think about the way we were raised, how we do relationships to our health and our internal experience, it's it's so connected. And I love that. Yeah. And I just wanted to I wanted to ask you a question because I think it like to just like layer in one more aspect of yeah, it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like in your own experience or when you're working with clients yeah. and the clients or yourself have started to kind of connect the dots around this Mm -hmm. maybe like codependency growing up, the expectations you took on as a child Mm -hmm. for your parents, you know, well-being for their relationships, Mm -hmm. how it's affected you, but then also how you're showing up in your business. So how have you noticed like coming and having this awareness or this awakening of understanding what you've taken on at an unconscious level? And Mm -hmm. then you bring that into your conscious mind. How has that like shifted where you're showing up in your own business or or if you have a client situation that you know you could share with us how someone has changed something about their own Mm, yeah yes no i think that's really really beautiful because it shows up so profoundly (laughs) and i know you're feeling this too um well to talk about me i if i think just about the achiever part right the the need to be seen for my accomplishments Mm -hmm. and tie that in with over responsibility for other people Mm -hmm. really the way that i started out my business it was okay i have to go from zero to a hundred so having extremely high expectations and they weren't even mine right it was all what will i what can i do to get attention so people knew that know that i'm doing good Mm -hmm. is it a money amount is it the way that i appear in certain social media is it is it along those lines so really realizing from that standpoint that no i need to come back to my own value system of what i want my life and my business to look like because what i was doing before i was really like on a hamster wheel Mm -hmm. and i and i wasn't achieving much because my expectations were up here and they didn't mean anything to me. Mm-hmm. It was really living out of a sense of fear, right? Like if I get this, I'm going to be okay. Then if I get the cover of a magazine, then I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. If I make a million dollars next year, then I'll be okay. Yeah. And coming from a point of um, being on disability, not able to work for, I think it was six years wow. to having my third child and major surgeries and then getting diagnosed with an autoimmune condition mm-hmm. and those being my expectations yeah. to, but coming out of fear mm-hmm. it wasn't inspiring it didn't drive me it didn't open me up and create spaciousness it was just so constricted and so narrow yeah. that when I finally started working with those parts and started really allowing myself to to relax and expand and define my own value system mm-hmm. then I created the business of my dreams which is working 10 to 15 hours per month, which is not being on social media, which is not needing to be validated by other people. Mm -hmm. But I get to spend my time in play with my family and in the garden and in nature and really healing environments. Mm -hmm. And I still feel every once in a while it comes up, oh no, you need to do more (laughs) because you're not achieving enough, right? You need to be seen, you need to grow, you should have more clients. And then taking a step back and really honoring that part of me because it wants me to do great things. And it's like, well, I'm already doing great things, right? Let's shift, let's just shift. And then also acknowledging too the, um, I was part of hustle and grind culture. 
And I did really well before I got sick. Like I did really well in um, those types of sales environments. And, and that was a great ego boost. But then getting sick coming out of that again, and it was just like a deflate. It was like, oh, no, you're worthless again. Mm-hmm. Right? And I love, I love the way um, the company that I was with was set up so well for that type of culture, for achievers. Because yeah. it was weekly leadership boards. It was different bonuses. It was hustle, 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 and then party hard. Right? That thing. Yeah. So it was really like an all-out like ego driven company very values based Hmm. but definitely playing to the ego and really fun to like kind of look at that now and acknowledge it because i could go back and i probably would do the same thing grow really fast and then burn out really fast because it's not aligned with what's well i think in general with women's physiology (laughs) it's a very male driven field which is totally fine and I think my mentality going in there too was like, well, I need to be better than the guys at this, right? Totally. Then I'll be, then I'll have my worth, right? But also, you know, like I love that there's more coming out about um, cycle syncing and really honoring like our, our moon cycle and, yeah. and the way that we are and how we play to strengths and what we do that complements the masculine, versus pushing just to be masculine because that's going against everything within us mm-hmm. so i think there's a really beautiful way to blend that yeah. and i i love the two three days a month where it's like full masculine let's let's do this and and then the rest is more gentle right like <laughs> yeah. the beauty about it is we get it all like it's true. we get rest we get like the hyper focused and social we get like all of it it's it's a roller coaster, like it's a ride and it's a journey and learning how to honor each of those parts is something I'm really getting into. Yeah. And I, I definitely feel the distinction between each of those phases now. Yeah. And it's, it's fun. Mm-hmm. But it's wow. also, I definitely have to get my head around that two, three day period and then the come down after. And I'm, I'm still, that's, I think that's my hardest transition at the moment. <laughs> Yeah. I love that you, you say, it, you know, even it, when it's a values based company, it can still be like pushing this pattern mm-hmm. of the ego, the achiever, yeah. the, you know, which is quite unhealthy. I mean, when you just kind of look at it, when you're really full on into that pattern, you're not taking care of yourself, you're yeah. um, sacrificing yourself to whatever mm-hmm. ego gain or desire or status, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. you think outside of yourself is going to make you feel good, right? And mm-hmm. it's, fascinating because I think often you know I I could relate so much to growing up and this younger version of myself that probably you know around age seven (laughs) decided that I had to be twice as good as any boy or any man you know and it was like it was like a real conscious thing for me it was like no I'm gonna be better than all the boys like you know I remember arm wrestling in grade six you know (laughs) just like beating them because they hadn't had any testosterone kick in yet, you know. I know, right? <laughs> Such a good what feeling, a like. <laughs> but I, I, I love that you brought that up because I remember that very distinctly too. Yeah. My competition wasn't the girls. My competition was all the boys. Really interesting, hey? Mm. Like just so interesting. Yeah, and how that pattern like plays out even in my yoga practice like going mm-hmm. to Mysore and I'm like, I'm going to be twice as good as all these guys here. I'm going to go down in Krandavasana and lift up. I'm going to like do all the yeah. push-ups. I'm going to do the back bends and grab my thighs. I'm going to do it all. I'm going to get certified. I'm going to beat the mm-hmm. pants off of all these guys. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that like, it's amazing. It really is. And then where did that come from? <laughs> right? Like where did that, and then, but also too, I, I just want to acknowledge too, there was, um, I found more safety with guys, yeah. right? Yeah. With guys. Yeah. And then women was always like a different type of competition. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's really, really prevalent because there's um, there's such a need from when I grew up, there's always women against women. Yeah. It was a, yeah, big time. Yeah. And it was, it was 
always the need to somehow put down, right? It's not let's lift each other up or I'm admiring you. It's no, I need to put you down. Mm -hmm. And I don't, and I think that's really curious. And I, there's this um, story, because I don't think it's mine. No, There's a story think. my mom always said about me. She just, Alyssa just, she doesn't get along with other girls. And I was like, I never liked that. That always tripped me up. She's like, yeah, you just don't get along with other girls. And I'm like, wow, you're like totally putting this on me. And that's like half of the world that I'm not going to get along with. And I'm like, it's yeah. really interesting. And I grew up with just brothers, like mostly male cousins. And my mom had three or two sisters and one brother. And there was a lot of rivalry there. And I'm like, is this her story from there that I'm just getting? Yeah. I'm just having put on me. And from our conversation before we started, yeah. noticing all the stuff that's, that's projected and put on, right? If we're not in a conscious relationship, totally. there is a lot, especially the mother-daughter relationship is really complex yeah. um, I don't know another word <laughs> that's that's kind um <laughs> I think complex uh, is good <laughs> yeah complex and yes it can evolve and be really beautiful but it is a really complex relationship and and I I'm I'm gonna like I said dive into that relationship and the healing and I'm just, I'm a little apprehensive <laughs> because it is, it is, it's yeah. On both ends. Yeah, totally. Right? So, totally. I think what's been really nourishing for me actually is in the last, I don't know, I think in the last 10 ish years <laughs> maybe, but like, especially in the last five years, Mm -hmm. um, is being in these online communities and spaces yeah. and like meeting women like you in the mm -hmm. ICM, you know, the Institute for Coaching Mastery um, and other coaching programs that I've been involved with and in the coaching field. It's the I've mostly, tr I mean, I've completely trained under women coaches basically, mm -hmm. but yeah. this connection and this meeting other women who are so supportive and so nurturing and really uplifting and being a part of a community of women that are lifting each other up yeah, and supporting each other. And, and it's not competitive, it's collaborative. And it's just been a real healing for me actually, because I also had a very similar experience and I think it was also the culture at the time, maybe like, I don't think it's a unique experience. I think women often feel, feel very competitive or mm -hmm. fearful of other women judging them or putting them down or putting them in their place. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten my own fair share of it. Like it doesn't come unwarranted. You post something on social media and you know what? Yeah. Guys don't respond with criticism. Only women respond mm -hmm. with criticism. And it's yeah. like, what is going on here, people? Yeah, it's <laughs> right? really interesting, yeah. So I think it's been really healing to just be with other women, you know, mm -hmm. in my business, I have, I work with all women, not, I mean, not necessarily completely as clients. I do have a couple male clients, but my supporting team who helps me in my business are all women and they're amazing. And I love them like family. Mm -hmm. And it's just been so nice to be in an environment where women are actually supporting women. I think there's such power in that we have to continue to shift this as a culture because yeah it's unhealthy like it's like this masculine force trying to kill the feminine energy and it's yeah not, i mean it's not gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> it's true yeah but there's this thing it's like um that old saying divide and conquer right yeah it's what um and we this is probably for another time but seeing women and there's if you want to get into like um, the history of witches and yeah. that sense, right? There was a very good time where it was the threat was the wise woman and that way of being and that sisterhood and 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 how it got broken up. And I think generationally, I uh, I was listening to a podcast on it, and it was the very first time I listened to something on that, and I felt a deep, deep just like 
emotional wound and I just started weeping and I was in my car listening to this driving to an appointment and I was like I've never really given this any thought and how that affected me so much I'm like oh there's something there yeah. and it's not mine it might not even be the generation before but I don't know where it's coming from but it's there on a collective mm-hmm. and to shift and to heal that relationship with women with each other and then women with men and then like there's all the other things that come once that healing is is happening in the way that we relate to each other and ourselves and and it's big like that's yeah. that's a big shift so i'm excited for that cuz i feel like it's coming it is it is sister i've gotten so many yeah. like downloads about this <laughs> Yes. Just, you, just you talking about it, I got shivers all over yeah, my I whole body. Yeah, like, for me, that's so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think the way that we're going, like, there's going to be huge shifts, and and I'm looking forward to it, and just mm-hmm. how humanity is going to change. And yeah, I don't, I don't even know what it'll look like. It's just it. There's like this. I don't want to say static because it's bigger than that, but this pulsing type of energy with that. And I don't, yeah. yeah. And it's connected to something that you said earlier, Mm -hmm. which is healing ourselves and these healing, Mm -hmm. this deep healing that's happening at the root of who we are collectively is also Mm -hmm. going to heal the planet. And the energy of the planet is the divine feminine. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's calling it's, it is not yeah. going to be suppressed any longer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love um, the way that you talk about things too in, I don't know, just your realm of expertise and, and the connection points that you have. I just, I love hearing from you and it's so, it's so fun to go back and forth talking. I just, yeah, it's thank such you. an honor. I love this. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much. I'm so happy you came on our podcast today. It was so, so good talking to you. Tell everyone where they can come and receive coaching and guidance from you. Oh, well, I <laughs> love that question. And it's not an easy one. I am mostly an offline coach. We were yeah. talking earlier about my, my inabilities with social media. Uh, the best place to reach me would be Instagram. I am starting to populate that just so I am online in small capacity. So that's at Van Alstein Alyssa. And then if you want to, I can drop my Calendly link for if someone feels like, yeah, let's chat. Then I can offer that as well. But that is my only online space. Perfect. So yes. We'll have all of those in the show notes so people can come and find you and yeah have beautiful conversations like this one. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) Such an honor. Thank you so much. That was just so amazing. What a fun conversation. I learned so much and I hope you did too. If you would love to go deeper and take your practice off your yoga mat and into your life, into the world, starting to learn more about pranayama, developing a regular practice, chanting, tuning into the vibrations and the Sanskrit mantras, as well as looking at some of the more esoteric philosophical concepts, come on in to my Inner Circle Mentorship. This is a private community that's online. I offer weekly Mysore classes in addition to these monthly workshops and and special programs. And you can find out all the information when you join the Finding Harmony community. Head on over to community-harmonyslater.com. Join the community and come on into my inner circle mentorship. I would love for you to be a part of this beautiful space and start growing into the full richness of this yoga practice together with me. That's it. We've concluded another episode of the Finding Harmony podcast. I just want to thank you so much for doing the work that changes the world, starting with yourself. It truly does make a huge difference. Please make sure you have your automatic downloads turned on wherever you listen so you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes. I have so much more magic I can't wait to share with you. Lastly, if you're on Instagram, I love connecting and hearing from you. So come on over and say hello at Finding Harmony Podcast. And you can also come say hello to me personally at Harmony Slater Official. 
Thank you again for being here. I cannot wait to share more with you in our next episode.